Have ghosts been scientifically proven to exist by a YouTuber? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get through that sentence with a straight face. So some of you in the comments suggested that I check out this video with the incredibly bold title, I scientifically proved ghosts are real by YouTuber Tyler Blanchard. Scientists hate him. He proved ghosts exist with this one weird trick. The best part about all of this is that the video is under 15 minutes long. Whew. I'm not trying to throw shade or anything, but uh, Sam and Colby would have easily milked at least an hour and a half out of this. True. So let's sit back, relax, and let the undeniable scientific video proof of Ghost wash over us. Well, are you ready for the incontrovertible evidence? I am very eager to see ghosts finally scientifically proven. And Tyler has come up with, admittedly, a very interesting experiment. Right behind me, I have the most haunted house in America. And uh, well, this one right here is just a normal Airbnb. I'm gonna send a group of people to both of them. The catch is that both groups think their house is haunted when in reality, only this one is. We're gonna find out if people make stuff up when they think something is haunted. And thus, the trap is set. In this video, Tyler sends one group of friends to an actually haunted house and he sends a different group of friends to just some run-of-the-mill Airbnb. And right away, we have an issue, because while this is a clever idea for a YouTube video, this is not necessarily a scientific way to prove something. What they're trying to set up here is the classic experiment structure, where you have one control group and one experimental group. The control group, in this case, the run-of-the-mill Airbnb, is the totally normal scenario with nothing unusual going on. And the experimental group is the one in the haunted house. The experimenter introduces an independent variable. This is supposed to be the only thing different between the two groups. And the goal of the experiment is to study the dependent variable, which is how the participants react to the independent variable. Well, first of all, you can't prove the existence of ghosts when your independent variable is based on ghosts already existing. So really, the whole experiment should be thrown out just from that, but let's play along anyway. The other problem here is that besides the absence or presence of a haunting, the groups also have environmental differences that could interfere with the results. Now, if that sounded like a bunch of nonsense to you, then allow me to give you an example that helps illustrate the problem. What if the haunted house was way older, way creakier, way dustier, and just generally a much more traditionally scary environment than say, the more modern, significantly cleaner and newer Airbnb? Do you think that these hypothetical environmental differences might affect the attitudes and perceptions of our test subjects. And then what about the possibility that the Airbnb is haunted too and they just don't know it? And I sucked all the fun out of the video in just under a minute, that's a new record. All jokes aside, while I'm already wary of the scientific validity of the experiment, let's just see what happens. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm ready for my mind to be blown and for his like button to be smashed. Let's check out what ghost gear they're using. I bought two sets of the same exact gear to use at the haunted and not haunted house. And the first piece of gear would be this ultrasound motion sensor. Yeah, this looks like a scam right here. But I can assure you it's not. Next, we have a normal twist flashlight. You can buy it on Amazon. Apparently ghosts can turn them on and off in response to questions. And I've never had it turn on accidentally. And finally, a thermal gun. You can also buy this on Amazon. In some cases, you can see human shaped figures. All of this equipment is completely unbiased. You sure about that? You sure about that? Motion sensor I'm fine with, thermal gun I'm fine with, but those flashlights, or should I say these flashlights are notorious for giving inaccurate information. I'm actually glad they're using these flashlights because I meant to debunk them in my Conjuring House video when I saw Sam and Colby use them. Abigail, if this is you, can you turn that flashlight off in three, two, <gasps> Whoa! But since there was like six hours of footage to sort through, I ran out of time and I ended up forgetting to include it. An omission that did not go unnoticed in the comments. But here I am now. So let's take a look at these flashlights that ghost hunters are always using. Oh my God. I hate clamshell packaging. These flashlights can often be seen turning on or turning off in response to the ghost hunters questions. Charlie and Lou. Hello. 
Now, since ghost hunters generally never go into detail about these flashlights, with few exceptions, you may be under the mistaken impression that these are just normal everyday flashlights, especially when someone describes them as, quote, normal. Next, we have a normal twist flashlight. But these flashlights are not normal flashlights. If you bring a normal flashlight to a ghost hunt, one that clicks on and off with a button, for example, I think you'll find that that normal flashlight won't be turning on or off by itself. How embarrassing. The other ghost hunters will make fun of you. All right, this guy brought a normal flashlight. You boring. All right, speaking of embarrassing, I gotta fess up. I made a mistake in this part. Please forgive me, ZachBaggins.png. You'll notice this flashlight I got is an LED model. Well, the trick I'm talking about doesn't work with LED models. So I sat here trying to get the flashlight to turn on and off by itself for a long time. And I was tearing my hair out trying to figure out why it didn't work. Well, it turns out ghost hunters only use these ones, the mini mag light incandescent models. Why these ones specifically? Well, because they have a trick to them. Mini mag lights turn on by twisting the cap. Since powering on the flashlight works on a gradual dial like this, instead of a simple on off switch, you can twist the cap until it reaches an exact point between being on and off. And this is the state that ghost hunters want the lights to be in, because in this state, they can literally turn themselves on and off. If you wanna know the exact science behind how they turn on and off in this state, YouTuber Mythos Paranormal did a thorough breakdown of how the internal heat of the flashlight expands and contracts the metal to turn the light on and off automatically. Throw in some ghost hunters repeating the same question over and over, along with a healthy dose of confirmation bias, which is our tendency to interpret things in a way that confirms our current beliefs, and you have a recipe for these flashlights inevitably coming on or turning off at just the right time. Are you a ghost? You are? Turn it off if you're a boy. Are you young? Are you, are you old? Do you prefer not to say? You prefer not to say, okay. So you don't wanna tell me how old you are. Yeah, uh, yeah, so this is not reliable information that we're getting, right? All right, nice, I guess there's ghosts here. Now, what happens next is really, uh, I'm hungry. Sorry, can I help you? I'm in the middle of something right now. I'm just reading my line. I was supposed to come in here and say, I'm hungry. So now it's your turn. Your line? Is this a sketch? No, we stopped doing those years ago. Trust me, nobody misses that. Hey, hey, listen, buddy, okay? I'm just doing my job, all right? You say your line, and after that, I'll let you get back to whatever it is you do in here all day. Excuse me? All right, never mind. I'll just tell you. So it says, I come in and say, I'm hungry. And then you're supposed to say, hi, hungry. Oh, brother. <clears throat> hi, hungry. I'm sponsored by Factor. Factor is a meal delivery service that ships pre-prepared meals straight to your door, ready to eat in two minutes. Perfect for a busy lifestyle. One thing I really like about Factor is that the meals are delivered fresh, not frozen. As someone who has eaten a lot of frozen meals over the years, the fact that the meals are fresh makes a big difference. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code WOLF50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shot for life. Two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. It's funny because uh, Kimmy and I have actually been using Factor for over a year now. And the reason we've kept up with it is because it complements our lifestyle so well. It's really flexible. You can choose to skip deliveries if you want and you won't be charged. Like we skipped the week of Thanksgiving last year, for example. Uh, and they've got tons of different options like keto or calorie smart uh, to fit different diets. And frankly, the main reason we've kept up with this is because the meals are so good. I actually have, <laughs> I stuck this on the fridge, a little note called my hall of fame where I write down my favorite meals just so I remember to get them if they rotate back in again. 
So yeah, my wife and I genuinely love Factor. Uh, we use it ourselves and we've had a great experience with it. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code WOLF50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. Two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you are an active subscriber. Big thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to witnessing this scientific breakthrough. So. They've got their gear. They're ready to go. Let's see what they found. So one of the guys, Mac, races the little boy ghost down the hallway, and this is enough to convince the other guy, Manuel. Oh man, oh, you got me believing. <laughs> now keep in mind, at the beginning of the video, this haunted house group was introduced by Tyler as the skeptics. I actually brought you all here because I know you guys don't believe in ghosts. I actually think that ghosts are real. I just think that every YouTuber is faking ghost videos. Oh, you got me believing. Okay, so it's starting to seem like the group of skeptics at the haunted house don't really seem that skeptical, Tyler. I know you guys don't believe in ghosts. I actually think the ghosts are real. While Mac and Manuel are racing the ghost upstairs, Tyler and Eric are in the cellar, watching this motion sensor continually go off. If there's anyone... Okay, that's not us. Meanwhile, at the Airbnb... Nothing. Same for the flashlights. They weren't turning on and off at the Airbnb. The YouTuber is baffled. I cannot come up with a good explanation. Maybe you guys can help me as to why the gear is only going off at the haunted house and not at the not haunted house. It doesn't make any sense. Now to me, these findings are scientifically inconclusive for a number of reasons. Number one, there was only one trial. You can't draw any rational conclusions from only one trial. Number two, possible environmental factors interfering with the results. Check out how dusty it is in the cellar where the motion sensor is going off. You can clearly see the dust particles swirling around in the air here. And if you don't think dust particles could set off a motion sensor, then I would ask how a ghost that's invisible to the naked eye could set off the same sensor. If it can detect something invisible, it can also detect something visible like dust. Now it's worth noting that even though the Airbnb is newer and cleaner, when they show the motion sensor used there in one of the clips, it looked pretty dusty too but the swirling dust wasn't setting it off. This device is called the Paraforce Paranormal Music Box, or PMB. How much did you pay for this? And it's $400. <laughs> I'm guessing about 200 of that is for the cool coffin shape. You know, to remind you of your impending doom. That's always fun to be reminded of. I tried looking up the user manual for the PMB online and I couldn't find it. Which is a shame because I'm really interested in how you calibrate this device. Okay, now it's calibrated. That is uh, done calibrating. Calibrated. Oh, ah. I do wonder if maybe the reason that the motion sensor is going off in the haunted house, but not in the Airbnb, may have something to do with how it's calibrated. Especially considering two different people are calibrating it. But without a manual or a $400 device of my own, I can't say for sure. Even after repositioning, it still went off. Eagle-eyed viewers may notice that in this clip, the motion sensor is going off while pointed at a mirror. <laughs> gotcha. Except not really. Uh, there's several different kinds of motion sensors, uh, including infrared and ultrasound being some of the more common ones. Now infrared uses light, which means a mirror might set it off with reflected light. And ultrasound uses sound waves, which means a mirror wouldn't set it off because the objects moving in the mirror aren't physical objects that it can detect with sound. The PMB is an ultrasound device, at least according to everything I can find online about it, so that means it wouldn't be set off just from the reflected light in the mirror. I know, I know, that would have been a great moment. <laughs> gotcha! But that's not why it went off. At this point, Tyler gives a more detailed update on the group at the Airbnb who are currently experiencing an existential crisis. Oh my god! Please don't attack me! Here's another issue that I have with the experiment, because these two groups of people are obviously so different in their mindset. In one house, you've got a young woman crumpled up on the floor, crying and screaming, please don't attach to me. And 
And in the other, you have a guy in a letterman jacket casually asking a ghost boy if he beat him in a race. If you won, turn the light off. Wow. Wow. So I won? I just think that maybe the same group of people should have been to both locations, you know? Just to eliminate one more possible interfering variable. So what did the Haunted House gang think of the experience? Oh, how are you guys feeling? I'm a believer. I'm a, I'm a believer. I've been a believer. I feel like we're like poking it now. And we're like seeing like how far can we make you do stuff no, for please us. stop doing that. Before they do one last test. Leave it silent for exactly 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. <laughs> Final verdict. Are ghosts are real? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely real. Yeah, they're I say the results are inconclusive. I think I've made my case pretty clear throughout the video about why I think no rational conclusion can be drawn from this experiment. Because one, there's no true control group due to the environmental differences. Two, a lot of the evidence that was gathered is circumstantial. And three, there was only one single trial. Again, great idea for a YouTube video, but not the best idea for gathering scientific evidence. And when you title your video, I scientifically proved ghosts are real, the scientific evidence matters. But let's talk about that circumstantial evidence. So the groups each brought three devices, the flashlights, the PMB, and the thermal gun. They didn't find anything on the thermal gun, so we can write that one off. The flashlights are unreliable for reasons I mentioned earlier, so frankly, we can also write those off. That leaves us with the PMB, which was the main focus of the video. Some of the shots of the PMB activating also show the PMB conveniently pointing out of frame where if they wanted to they could have someone waving and activating the motion sensor out of sight but i'd prefer to give these guys the benefit of the doubt instead of coming up with theories like oh it's simple guys there's a guy in a green screen suit that they edited out like yeah there's always the possibility that they could have just used movie magic or something like that but i don't think we need to go there in order to question what's happening here. Besides, for one of the shots, Tyler brought a wide angle lens to try to show that there was no one setting off the sensor out of frame. So I'd like to believe these guys are sincere. So then how do you explain the motion sensor going off so consistently in the haunted house? It's pretty simple. I can't. I can't deliver a definitive explanation for what's causing the motion sensor to go off, but Tyler Blanchard can't either. Since it's an ultrasound motion sensor, there's a lot of things that could trigger it that wouldn't trigger an infrared motion sensor. From what I've read online, these can include dust particles, like I talked about earlier, insects, even air circulation. People in the comments like to make fun of me when I say it could just be a drafty house, but it could just be a drafty house. It's old. Old houses are drafty. Now it's true that despite all that, the timing of the PMB lighting up directly after the questions were asked seems pretty compelling. Can you make the music box start? Wow. Okay. That's phenomenal. Um, ring the music box if it's, if it's okay if we can sit down. Thank you. But watch here. In the part Tyler's narrating over, the PMB lights up again, and it seems like no one was asking it a question here. And that makes me wonder how many times this thing lit up either unprompted or in the middle of someone's sentence, or how many times it was asked something and didn't light up at all. Because, of course, in a video with a tight 13 minute runtime like this, you're not gonna show all the moments like that. Are you tall? Are you short? Are you a man? If the PMB lit up like 60 times total, for example, but in the video we only see the five times that it happened with perfect timing, then the consistency becomes a lot less impressive. They're showing all the times it worked, but not all the times it didn't. And it's worth noting too, that the flashlights appeared to have perfect timing for questions too. We gonna race? Turn off, do you wanna race? I don't know, this is pretty well timed. And we know those flashlights are still unreliable. So, did this video really scientifically prove that ghosts exist? Yeah, they're definitely real. No, 
Like I said, it's an interesting idea for a video and it obviously worked for them. It got a million views, but with only one trial and only one piece of gear that provided any reliable evidence, it ultimately can't provide us with any rational conclusions. There's not enough data. You know, this video actually reminds me of something I said at the end of my Conjuring House video, uh, which was that I wish they had brought scientists along for these ghost hunts. Having a physicist examine the footage, for example, or even a professional magician or illusionist, why not at least have someone from the scientific community give an alternate perspective on things? Well, guess what? Tyler posted a second video just three months ago titled, I took a scientist ghost hunting. So let's see what happens in that that one. People have been trying to prove and disprove ghosts for thousands of years, but today we're actually going to do that with these scientists. So you may be wondering about the scientists that Tyler is taking ghost hunting. And I have good news and bad news about that. The good news is that he does bring along two scientists, but the bad news is that they're YouTubers. I'm a scientist and Alex is an electrical engineer. Listen, okay, I'm not writing them off yet, but I'm just saying it's not quite what I had in mind. I was hoping for like some dry, humorless old British man or something. I need someone in the YouTuber video who's gonna look at the YouTuber like they deeply resent them. That's what I want. Not some young happy guys who are gonna be like, science, am I right? Science. Howdy. Science. In all seriousness, I'm sure Lewis and Alex are gonna do a bang up job. I believe in them. I'm just messing around. But also, I genuinely do want the video that I just described. Maybe I'll make it. Maybe I'll make the video someday. Ooh, what is up guys? Today we're bringing a scientist ghost hunting. Introducing our friend, Dr. Albert Newton Faraday. I can't believe I've been reduced to this. So they're back at the Bracken Fern Manor, just like last time. And this time, Tyler brought a 360 degree camera. Also got a 360 camera. Now we have everything in frame, always. It's worth noting though, that they don't really use it. And to my surprise, they even show the scientists those trick flashlights. It looks like a real flashlight, right? It looks like a flashlight. Last time we were here, we basically would sit these in the hall uh -huh. off and they would turn themselves on. We're not off to a good start. Dr. Albert Newton Faraday wouldn't be fooled by those. The guys start walking around with the EMF readers, which are supposed to detect electromagnetic fields. I was relieved to see that Lewis pointed out that it was reading the electrical wiring in the wall. So that means two things. One, we can't trust them. And two, you technically need to ghost hunt with the lights off. So it looks like we're back to what I've come to call all reliable, the PMB. And thankfully, Alex, the electrical engineer, immediately corrects how they're using it. What Alex pointed out there is that the music box wouldn't project a perfectly straight line. It instead would actually project a cone. The star of the show isn't gonna give it the spotlight so easily though. The PMB goes off again, mere moments later. This time, seated. Oh. That's interesting. The scientists are baffled. So Alex starts taking it apart. I don't know if this means anything, but I actually noticed that the device they're using in this video is a different model from what they used last time. Like remember the cool coffin shape it had? This was just a rectangle, but I assume it's the same thing on the inside. Maybe Alex will tell us. It's a distance sensor with a motor attached. We'll come back to that in a moment. Just after this, Alex goes ahead and debunks the trick flashlights by using the thermal gun to show they turn on and off with the internal temperature changes. You can see the temperature climb to 71 as it's on, then the temperature comes back down to 69. It's a cycle. So the guys end up basically saying that all the gear they were using last time is unreliable, except the star of the show. It's reliable at doing what it does from what we've seen, right? Yes. Like when something enters the cone of sensitivity, it goes off. I knew you could do it, Lewis and Alex. I believed in you the whole time. You may not be the Dr. Albert Newton Faraday that I had in mind, but you guys are doing a bang up job so wow, far. Wow, Ethan, great moves. Keep it up. Now the part we've all been waiting for the PMB in the cellar. Interestingly, the PMB ends up activating while being pointed at the mirror again, just like last time. Again, the scientists are baffled. Okay, what, is he, what do you think is it? I have no clue. I feel like maybe holding the PMB in your hands and waving it around instead of setting it down on a stable surface probably isn't ideal, 
but unfortunately that's most of the footage that we get. It's too bad we only get to see less than two minutes of the PMB in the cellar because this is the part I was by far most interested in. And as it turned out, Lewis and Alex didn't have a strong explanation for why the PMB was activating in that part of the cellar. As a conclusion, I cannot concretely say if ghosts do or do not exist. So yeah, they don't know either. And that's okay. What's important to keep in mind with this is that just because you're not able to immediately explain why something happens, doesn't mean that there's no explanation. And it also doesn't mean that it has to be a paranormal explanation either. I get that Tyler and company aren't gonna wanna spend three nights performing tests with the PNB in the cellar. That's gonna drive anyone up the wall but a few minutes of trial and error also isn't gonna cut it. I think this comment that I found under Tyler's video sums up my overall thoughts pretty well. Friendly reminder that in science, you try to prove yourself wrong, not right. If you want to believe that ghosts are real, you're gonna have to figure out everything that could explain what you observed first. And when you completely run out of ideas, only then can you begin to think that perhaps you're onto something supernatural. Right. A paranormal explanation is only a rational conclusion when all other options are exhausted. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. Makes sense to me, and it's consistent with everything that I know about science. But not everyone agrees. Here's a reply to that comment that, frankly, I was stunned by. Science is proving yourself wrong? What kind of dumb nonsense is that? Science is meant to be both proven and disproven. And the fact that people are agreeing with you highlights their ignorance. <sighs> Scientific literacy is a real problem right now, isn't it? Uh, if you go into an experiment seeking to prove your hypothesis, then you are introducing personal bias and you are allowing it to influence the results. Straight up. That means it's not a good experiment and you're not a good scientist. You should go into an experiment seeking to disprove the hypothesis because that's the whole point of conducting the experiment. You're testing the falsifiability of your hypothesis because if it's easily falsifiable, then it's not a strong hypothesis, is it? That was so hard to say, by the way. Easily falsifiable, strong hypothesis. So many S's, and I just said more S's. All that to say, if you're using an experiment to try to prove something, like in the case of the video, I scientifically proved ghosts are real. Today, I have a way to actually find out if ghosts are real. Then unfortunately, the experiment was flawed from the start. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Think critically. Why do you move the camera until you get to a tree that blocks the view of my bow? Who, who made the executive decision that that was to stop it? Literally, I'm not doing it. It's doing it. Stop doing that.